My ears were still ringing from the bombs. Oni had sent me in on a recon mission, but then they'd hit the base with everything they had, almost no warning. No attempt to protect me, or Ari. Certainly not civilians. I was just another data point to them. Disposable. I could feel all the hearts and minds I'd fought for slipping away. The UNSC would always bomb, and the rebels would always take up arms in vengeance. Maybe both Sully and Ilsa were right. There was no room for anything else. As I looked down at Bostwick, I couldn't help but feel guilty. I had taken this lost, naive kid and turned her into a foot soldier for my cause. I'd become an expert at rationalizing my actions, telling myself that ultimately, I was working towards the greater good. Can I see the woman? Don't touch me! I'd recommend sedating her until we can effectively treat her injuries. I'd rather rot! Just rest. As Bostwick drifted out of consciousness, I looked over at the data chip. Ari secured prime intel on the anomalies. And after that airstrike, any shred of faith I had that Oni would do the right thing with it was gone. For all I knew, they would just cover the whole thing up and let another colony fall. But, in the right hands, this could help save lives. I wasn't going to turn it over to them. I was going to get real answers. And there was only one person who could give them to me. The only problem was, he'd been dead for months. The safe house barely qualified as a house. A crumbling old farm on the outskirts of Binterol, a dusty wasteland in the other colonies. No one around for miles, except for the occasional alien trader. Not a great place to live, but a perfect place to hide. What is this place? It's not in my database of safe houses. It's off the grid. There's some sort of signal interference here. Yeah, that's kind of the point. The safe house was an old lesson from Ari. When Oni puts you under cover, you lose everything. Every trace of who you were is wiped away to protect the mission. Ari taught me, always keep a place just for me. A place to keep memories, to stay attached to the life Oni had erased. A place I could run away to when cover got too deep. Somewhere to ground myself. Or maybe stash a secret. <sighs> Who's there? Don't come in! I've got a gun! I've got Get two guns! Get out of the way, Mishok. Maya! You're back! I thought you'd never come back! I thought nobody would ever come back. He looked rough. Greasy hair, a thin, patchy beard. The weight he'd lost in his face made his darting, bloodshot eyes all the more unsettling. Oh, what have you been doing to my house? Oh, you have no idea what it's been like. Wait, why are you carrying a dead person? She's not dead. Here, help me get her into the bunk. Mashak Maradi. Oh, is that an AI? Well, you're rather energetic for a dead man. You've got an AI? Well, this is Black Box. The official report indicated that you'd been terminated quite brutally, if I recall. I wish I had. It does look like he's been tortured. He hasn't been tortured. Oh, really? Okay, well then what would you call it? She left me here with no comms. No access to Waypoint. No slush. I've been reading paper books. Paper books! I couldn't go through with killing Mishak. He'd figured out my secret, and he was gonna tell Ben. He had to be silenced, but... When I broke into his house that night, he got so scared... He ran head first into a wall and knocked himself unconscious. He's a great hacker, but dangerous? Not even close. So I hid him, stuck him out in the middle of nowhere, and put a blackout array cutting off communications for a kilo in every direction. But a few months cut off from the outside world had left him a little tech-starved. And honest to goodness, AI was the best toy I could have brought him. You know, you're really top-of-the-line stuff. You live on this chip? In a way, you see... Okay, I have a question. I'm sure you get it all the time. But other AIs look like people, right? But you're just like a big blue cube. I am pure intellect. I feel no need to affect a facade in order to make myself more palatable to humans. I am what I am. I am black box. Yeah, right. But the box is really blue, though. <sighs> black is the absence of light. A hologram can't display black. I think I'm going to call you blue cube. Ah! Did you just electrocute me? No. Oh, hang on. 
Yes. Listen, Blue Cube, I can stick this chip in a microcooker. Miss Shock, just stop it. Hey, um, why did you bring him here? He's only. Miss Shock, I'm only. And how long is that going to last once he tells them you're keeping me alive? You can't trust an AI. They want you to think they're these perfect synthetic beings, but you know how they make them? They take some dead guy's brain and just rewire it with new programming. They're basically computer zombies. We also have excellent hearing. Focus, Mashak. The anomalies, the same ones you were tracking, they're here now and they're real. They've already destroyed five colonies. Now I've got a data chip full of intel from one of the sites and zero context. I need information. The kind that isn't sitting out there in the Waypoint Index. Wait. The kind you can only find in the slush. Do you mean you're going to give me back my compad? Hold on. Yes! Hold on. Yes, yes, yes! I'm opening up a limited channel, an encrypted frequency just for you, so BB can't use it to call Oni. I'm not sensing a lot of trust between us, Mike. Find out what's going on. Fast. Absolutely. One billion percent focused. Wow, I have a lot of unread messages. Oh, no. What? The unthinkable has happened. I fell off the leaderboards in Ungoy Farmer. Mishok! One billion percent focus. While Mishok tried to uncover the secrets of the slush, I went in to check on Bostwick's wounds. Mishok had made a real mess of the place. Clothes and ration wrappers on every surface. But I noticed Mishok had left one area untouched. My shelf. I picked up an old photo. Me as a little girl holding up a trophy. Is it a spelling, I think? Huh. It was hard to remember the exact moment, but I remembered the place. My dad's old cabin. When I was setting up the safe house, I kept thinking back to that cabin, with its wooden walls and a door my dad carved himself. Something about it always felt so real, so permanent. I was still lost in the past when I looked over and saw Bostwick, awake, staring at me, pure hatred in her eyes. The look on her face caught me completely off guard. She looked like she was ready to kill me. Before I could get a word out, Bostwick was coming at me with a scalpel. She was still weak, though. It didn't take much to restrain her. Eventually, she gave in to the pain. I know that you're angry. I would be too if you just listened. Just do it. Do what, Boss? I, I, kill me, I'm torture to... me. I'd rather die than be in the custody of a traitor. What? I'm not a traitor. You're Oni, aren't you? Well, yes, but I'm trying to protect you. You're my friend. Pharaoh and I were friends. I don't know who you are. You're right. You don't know me. But we're not so different, you and I, okay? Just trust me. We trust you? <laughs> were your parents killed by Oni officers? No, boss. I am nothing like you. You're a liar. You're right. But believe it or not, you are the closest thing I have to a friend. And I want you to know the truth. I at least owe you that. Come on. Ask me whatever you want. Well, what's your real name? Maya Sankar. Mm -hmm. And how long have you been a rat trader? I joined Oni when I was around your age, but I didn't get into spec ops. As I opened up to Bostwick after years of deceiving her, I told myself that regaining her trust like this would protect her. But as the answers poured out of me, I knew deep down why I was really doing it. I needed to finally start telling the truth. No. I had absolutely no idea they were going to attack. They kept me strictly need to know. Were you going to try to turn me? Make me into an Oni spy like you? No. I... It wasn't like that. I... All that stuff you said as Pharaoh about finding the truth, about beating them with ideas and lifting up the outer colonies as equals. I meant it. Every word. M more than anything, I just... I wanted to... After being undercover for so long, I started to feel... Sometimes I feel like I am Pharaoh. It's hard to explain. I but I want what she wants, you know? And in a lot of ways, being Pharaoh makes more sense to me now than ever. I could have... Maya! I rushed in and found Mashak with his jaw on the you floor. Know, you could have led with, Hey, Mashak, here's your compad. And by the way, the Master Chief is dead! Yeah, I've been a little preoccupied. What does it say? Well, the official news is that there's no news. Same speech on a loop. He died in the line of duty, protecting us all, blah, 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 what a hero. But lots of speculation in the slush. 
theories, other theories debunking those theories. Some people claiming the UNSC is using his death to cover up a bigger story. They think he's still alive. Reliable, I'm sure. What would the UNSC have to gain from presenting the chief as dead? Why destroy his legacy? Uh, it cements his legacy. Bostwick had made her way to her feet and stumbled into the room. You once said the heroes are born out of sacrifice, but cemented in death. Yeah, but still why? What, to cover up the anomalies? How does killing the chief publicly cover that up? It doesn't. Unless the truth is scarier than the cover-up. What if the whole Pico story was a dry run? If the chief isn't following orders anymore and he's proving to be more trouble than he's worth, you'd have to get rid of him, right? I was processing everything very slowly at that point. But what Mashak said had struck a chord. If the chief wasn't following the rules, and the Oni AI bot's statistical analysis pointed to his death being more valuable than his life, they wouldn't hesitate to pull the trigger. I should know. I've just been the victim to the same analysis. Okay, so is there anything specific about the anomalies? I did find one theory, but it's a little new, new, new testament. You know the triad? The religious cult? Yeah, they're popping up all over the place, claiming that the anomalies aren't random. That they're part of the transcendence, and that their leader, Dask, has returned, and that these anomalies are basically the galactic end times. The triad was a religion. Sort of. I'd run into small pockets of their members a few times while undercover. They were always preaching about multiple lives, transcendence, the end of the universe. Crazy ideas that didn't sound so crazy if you were desperate enough. Lucky for them, there were a lot of desperate people in the outer colonies. Their leader, a man named Dosk Gevadim, had gained millions of followers across Waypoint, then suddenly disappeared. Oni was pretty sure he was dead or in hiding, but his followers were convinced he'd ascended into another realm. Well, Oni keeps blocking the posts, but word's getting out. Here, take a look. For your struggles, I have willed myself back to this plane of causation and particle so that I might illuminate the meaning of these events. Exquisite transcendence is yours for the taking. Oh, children, we are now upon the rebirth. These so-called disasters herald a new age of unification through disentanglement, a glorious unbecoming, freedom from the quivering vessels of self we've clung to for so long. Do not fear these events. Do not fear their power, for as the worlds shake, we are inevitably arriving at the precipice of existence, the edge of a metaverse that is awakening for us, as we, who have only known the night, are about to bear witness to the first dawn. That is the advent of the third life. And I find myself humbly bestowed with a genetic imperative to release your fear, to help you step lightly from the edge into ascendance. The spiritual genocide that awaits those who do not open their eyes, the abyss beneath them, I cannot bear. This is only the beginning. Could he possibly have intel on these things? I suppose. I mean, anything is possible. We live in a galaxy where the human race was almost wiped out by an alien race that breeds farts. Actually, it's methane, and I'm fairly certain that grunts were far from wiping out humanity single-handedly. Okay, now we're just splitting hairs. All right, well, on that note, Maya, I believe this detour has gone on long enough. It's time to return to the realm of rational thought. I can't go back. I can't trust Oni anymore, not after everything that's happened. There's no telling what they do with the intel we've gathered. Maya, I wish Oni was run with the monstrous efficiency you and Mashak imagine. So tell me then, what's really going on here? What's really going on, Maya, is that you're walking a treacherous and narrow path. But if you return with me and the data to Oni, you may just avoid falling off. Is that an offer or a threat? What the hell? Sounds like an incoming call. But I blocked all comm signals. It would appear that you did not. Maya! Noah? What the hell? How did you get through? Why didn't you warn me about the bombing? I tried to hold them off as long as I could. I was overruled. They decided taking out the target was worth losing the asset. Damn it, Noah. Maya, listen. I am not an Maya, asset. Maya, there's I'm no a... time. Your location isn't secure. What? But how, how do they even know Why where didn't we... you check in? They think you're on the run. There's an extraction team inbound right now. What? But listen how did they... Listen to me, Maya. They just want to bring you in. Nothing bad is going to happen. No, I no, promise. No, 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 Maya, no. stop. Listen to me. Whatever you do... Goodbye, Noah. Maya, you're making a terrible mistake. We gotta move. Everybody, now! I understood what he was saying. Bring me in. 
That means midnight facility. When they bring you in, you don't come out again. That wasn't gonna happen to me. How did they find us? It was Blue Cube. The little rat bastard sold us out! My communications have been incapacitated by the blackout array since we arrived. Perhaps they tracked us from Conrad's point? No time. Help me flip the bed. Okay, but why... Holy crap, my bed is full of grenades. Bostwick, are you okay? Yeah. Why is my bed full of grenades? Can you run? I don't need your help. I'm setting a 10-second timer. That should give us enough time to get clear. There's no cover out there, so once we get outside, run. Oh God, I should have paid more attention in PE class. The explosion should distract them long enough for us to get to the ship. What about before the explosion goes off? Pray they miss. Hey, Maya. Yeah, um, I don't mean to keep harping on this, but why is my bed full of grenades? Maya, you can still end this. No, I can't. Everybody ready? Timer's a go. In three, Let's do it. two, oh God. one, run! Those 10 seconds felt like eons. It took them five just to spot us. The next five were an eternity. The next thing I can remember, I was standing in the cargo bay, feeling the familiar tug of acceleration as the engines engaged. Uh, uh, Bostwick was doubled over in pain. You are fine. I'm fine. As we left the planet's atmosphere, I didn't know where I could go. My employer had just tried to light me up. Bostwick would out me to the rebels the first chance she got. Pharaoh was gone. Commander Maya Sankar was gone. And with the few memories I'd kept now burning up in that safe house below, whoever it was I used to be was gone too. All I had now was an AI who wanted to turn me in, a betrayed friend who wanted me dead, a hacker with a heart of lettuce, and a data chip filled with information that could get me killed. I had no idea what to do next but then somebody made that decision for me. What is that? What did the zombie do now? It's not me. There's a ship approaching fast off our starboard. Oh, damn it, Oni. I'm moving to full thrust. All of I recommend securing your person instead. Now. You heard him. Strap in. Normally, you can't feel how fast you're going in space. Unless, of course, somebody grabs you by the tail. <laughs> Forced deceleration is nasty. If we hadn't been warned, it would have smashed us into a pile of guts on the bulkhead. But even strapped in, the G-forces can be gut-wrenching. By the time I unbuckled and fell out of my seat, all the ship's systems were shutting down. Everybody okay? <laughs> They'd killed our power. We were helpless. I could hear them coming through the airlock door. An Oni acquisitions team. I tried to stand up and face them, but I was too dizzy collapsed on the deck. There was a pneumatic hiss as the boarding tube bolted to our hull. The clink of their mag boots as they stepped across the gangway, even the sound of their TACCOMs hacking our lock system. I'd been on the other side of that door. I know what happens when they take you. I wish I could say I was brave. Pharaoh would have been brave, but I'd seen what happened to Ben. I was afraid of the pain. I was afraid to lose myself. I didn't want to die. I looked up as they came in. There were three of them, but my eyes were immediately drawn to their leader. I saw his razor-sharp beak first, bright red quills spilling out over his neck, and finally, his talons, gripping a needler, pointing it right at my chest. This wasn't Oni. This was something worse, something more unpredictable. Jackals.